Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's DIY video, we are making this beautiful and classic farmhouse tray using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. This simple and easy DIY is an amazing addition to your spring decor with its fresh and light wood farmhouse vibe, a little shabby chic, maybe a pinch of rustic, you're gonna love it. And let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I had one of these Dollar Tree brain teaser games. These are the wood puzzle games that you can get at Dollar Tree in the toy section. There are a couple of different varieties of them, and the one that I used for this tray is these long, thin pieces of natural and orange painted wood. They're attached in this cube-like formation, and for this DIY, I disassembled the puzzle. I removed all the orange pieces so that I could use only the natural wood pieces. They all have these two tiny pegs in them that help hold the puzzle together. So I had to remove all those tiny pegs, which was a little challenging on some of them. And it did take me a little while and two different wire cutters to try to get some of them out. But once I did get them out, they do leave these small holes on either end of the wood, but I am not concerned with that because the side with the holes will be facing down onto the tray and it won't even be seen. So I didn't even bother trying to fill them or anything. I'm going to be staining all the natural wood for this tray with this Varathane wood stain in the color Ipswich Pine. I will link any of the items that are not from Dollar Tree down in the description box below for you. Besides the brain teaser puzzle pieces, I'm also going to be staining two bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree and these medium sized wood beads that I got on Amazon a while ago. I, I really think buying these beads in Am um, on Amazon in bulk is the most cost effective way to go. I had needed 22 beads, but I think I stained a couple more than that because I do like to have some extra. I'm also using four of these small wood cabinet poles for the tray legs. I got these on Amazon a while back in a bulk size of like 30 for I think about 10 or $12. It was a very good deal. And you can use them for so many different things. You can use them as legs on projects and handles for tops and stuff like that. I will also link those for you below. I stained the brain teaser pieces first, followed by the two cutting boards. And I'm staining all sides and the edges with a generous amount of the stain and I use a dry paper towel to wipe off any of the excess stain. Um, I really wanted to get a nice coat of the Ipswich pine color onto all the pieces. It is a really nice light but goldeny kind of warm shade. It is good for when you don't want a natural wood color but you also don't want to go like full-fledged brown with your stain. I find that it's a really good in-between color for that, in my opinion. I did use the same color on all the pieces, but since we are dealing with all different types of wood, the pieces don't end up looking exactly the same color. As you can see with the wood knobs here, they look a bit darker because of the type of wood that they are, but we will be doing some other stuff to all of the pieces. So in the end, they'll end up a little bit more cohesive looking than when what they are now and when we're done with them. Initially, I figured the easiest way to stain the beads was to string them onto these Dollar Tree skewers and then I tape the ends of the skewers so that the beads won't slide off of them. But I did end up taking a lot of the beads off the skewers to finish staining them because it was just easier to get the color onto them from all different angles when they were off the skewers. I also used paper towels to wipe off the extra stain before I set all my pieces aside to fully dry overnight. Once dry, I'm using a mixture of Waverly white chalk paint and folk art acrylic paint in the camel color and a small dry brush. I'm going to brush dry the beigey like paint roughly over the beads at first, followed by the puzzle pieces. And then I'm going to go over the knobs and then the bamboo cutting boards. 
And on the knobs and the beads especially, I pay close attention to the edges with my paint because I really want to emphasize that distressed look as if they've just been through years and years of natural wear and tear. Once the distressed paint is all dry and that stuff dries pretty quickly, I grab some tight bond wood glue and I'll link that for you below and I'm going to glue the beads onto one of my two cutting boards. There are five beads across the two short sides and six more beads across each of the two long sides. And I found that the easiest way to space those out evenly is to start with the four corners and then two middle beads on the short sides. And then I put one bead in between the corners and the middle. And then moving on to the long sides, I place one bead in the middle and two more beads in between the middle and the corners on every side. I dip the bottom of each of the beads into the glue to make sure that I'm using enough to really hold them into place. Once the beads are glued down, I drop some glue onto the tops of the beads and I do have to wipe some of that glue that starts to drip down the sides of the beads. I don't just wipe that away and then place the second bamboo cutting board on top of those beads and that one is in line with the cutting board that is under the beads. So it's kind of like a, a bead sandwich. I take the brain teaser puzzle pieces and I place them on top of the cutting board just trying to figure out the best position for each piece. Now these are going to be the side walls of the tray and because they are not the exact same measurements to fit the cutting board, I have to place them onto it and then figure out where I need to cut pieces in order to make them all fit perfectly. So I begin with laying them all out and then using my tight bond wood glue, I glue down the corner pieces first and then find the unfilled spaces on each side. I'm gonna mark the length that I need onto the spare piece of puzzle with a pencil. And then I'm going to use my miter shears to cut through the puzzle pieces to give me the right size piece to fit into those gaps. The shears do work for this, but I find, and maybe it's just me, but I find that these shears, it always takes some like serious strength and elbow grease to cut through wood with these. I just, I wish that there was a non-power tool that cut through these and like the Django blocks super easily. A girl can dream, right? <music> Lastly, I take my four wooden knobs and I'm going to use the tight bond wood glue to glue them down onto the bottom of the tray as feet. And that's to give my overall tray some really nice height. And this is how my Dollar Tree Spring Farmhouse tray turned out. I really like how this tray ended up looking. Farmhouse is not my usual vibe for my DIYs, but I am really liking this. I like the pale but warm colors in the wood, and even though every component of this tray is a different kind of wood, I think they all end up with a very cohesive look. I definitely see this in a kitchen, maybe for holding a dish soap or something like that, but I can also see something like this as being purely decorative. I think a lovely small candle or a candle holder and small plant would look amazing on this tray in a living room or a bedroom. I also think you could style it for a bathroom and have it give off a very spa-like feel. I don't know why, but lighter colored wood always says spa to me. Is that just me? I don't know. But this particular piece, like in a bedroom, would even go a little shabby chic if you were to style it with some florals or pale pink, green, or blue colors. For a farmhouse piece, I feel like it's pretty versatile. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments where you think is the perfect place in your home for this try and if you like it. I would also like to know from you guys if you'd classify this tray as strictly farmhouse or do you think it represents another kind of style? I'd really like to get your take on this. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. I just want to take a minute to thank my subscribers and those considering subscribing. 
This channel is almost at 3,000 subscribers, which is mind-blowing for me. And I want you all to know just how appreciative I am of your time and of your support. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.